Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The Chernobyl bug is a great pattern for imitating a variety of terrestrial insects, such as grasshoppers and crickets. These insects are very active in late summer and early fall and this is when the high-floating Chernobyl bug is the most effective. The fly starts with a nice big size 4 long shank hook. Make sure it's well secured in the jaws of your tying vise. You can then load a bobbin with the spool of yellow unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and after taking several wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Continue taking rearward thread wraps down the hook shank to build up a thread base on the hook. Wrap all the way back to the start of the hook bend, then forward until your thread hangs at about the hook point. Get hold of one of the yellow cock feathers and preen a dozen or so fibers on one side of the stem down to perpendicular. While keeping their tips aligned, pull the stem of the feather away to strip them free. Measure to form a tail about a hook gap in length, then secure the fibers to the top of the hook shank with a few wraps of tying thread. Go back to the same feather and repeat the procedure to collect another dozen or so fibers. Lay this clump on top of the previous with their tips aligned, then take wraps of tying thread to secure both clumps to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the bend. Lift the fibers up and take a thread wrap or two beneath them so they kick up just a bit. Then advance your tying thread first forward to further lock down the fibers, then back once again to the hook bend, or now the base of the tail. Next, retrieve a single saddle hackle feather and with its shiny or front side facing you, gently preen down the fibers to expose the very tip of the feather. Lay the tip against the near side of the hook, like so, and begin taking thread wraps to secure it. Continue wrapping forward until the large majority of the fibers are firmly bound down to the hook shank. End with your tying thread right at the base of the tail. Pick up a small drop of super glue and apply it to the thread wraps above your tying thread. Get hold of one of the strips of 2mm yellow craft foam and find its midpoint. Place the midpoint on top of the hook shank directly above your tying thread, then take a nice tight wrap or two to anchor the foam and set the adhesive. Take a couple more wraps to really lock everything in place, then pull the forward pointing portion of the foam back and take a wrap or two around just the hook shank in front of it. Follow this with a few more wraps over top of the foam. Pull the foam back and place a mark about three eye lengths back from the back edge of the hook eye. Now divide the length between that mark and your tying thread and mark that. Split the rear segment in half and make another mark, then the front segment as well. These marks will act as guides when it comes time to segment the fly. Advance your tying thread forward to the first mark, then retrieve another small drop of super glue and apply it where your thread is located. Pull down on the foam and take a couple of thread wraps right there to once again bind it down and set the adhesive. You can then advance your thread forward to the next mark. Repeat this procedure at each mark going up the hook shank. You should be left with four roughly equal length segments, like so. Now, take a thread wrap about a sixteenth of an inch in front of your last wrap to create a short segment of completely bound down foam. Pull the forward pointing portion of the foam back, take a couple of wraps around just the hook shank in front of it, then return your thread rearward and take a few more over top of the bound down foam. In the end, it should look something like this. Get hold of the saddle hackle feather and with the shiny side facing you, preen the fibers rearward. Take wraps with the feather so the stem lands where each of the segments is bound down and goes diagonally across the underside of the fly. Once you reach the front of the fourth segment, take wraps of tying thread to firmly anchor the feather's stem, then snip the excess off close. Sweep any forward pointing fibers rearward and take wraps of tying thread to hold them back. Moisten your fingers and preen down the hackle fibers equally on either side of the fly 
then fold the rearward pointing portion of the foam over top to form the back of the fly. Without letting go of the foam, take wraps of tying thread to bind down the folded over portion. As before, continue binding it down by forming a narrow band of tying thread. The fly should now look something like this. Reach in with your tying scissors and carefully snip off the excess foam that you just bound down. Be careful not to snip your tying thread in the process. Lift up the forward pointing portion of the foam and take a few wraps right behind the hook eye, then anchor the foam there. Return your thread to the front edge of the fly's back. Snip five or six strands of pearl crystal flash free from the hank and locate their midpoint. Place the midpoint above your tying thread and take a few wraps to secure it. Fold the forward pointing portion back and take thread wraps to anchor it back. Snip the crystal flash off to form a wing just slightly shorter than the hackle fiber tail. Snip free a 3 inch length of the white zelon, then separate it in half lengthwise. Set one half aside for later use and find the midpoint of the other. Place the midpoint on top of the fly above your tying thread and take wraps to secure it. Here too, fold the forward pointing portion back and bind it down with thread wraps. The crystal flash underwing and zelon overwing should be roughly the same length. If not, trim is needed. Pull the wings back and down, then fold the forward pointing portion of the foam back over top of them. Take a few nice tight thread wraps to keep the foam bound down on top of the fly. Trim off the excess foam so it's just a little shorter than the foam segment in front of it. Pull two strands of yellow rubber leg material free from the rest, then separate them into individual strands. Get hold of one of the strands so the back end is just slightly longer than the front end and lay that point on top of the fly. Take a couple of thread wraps to secure it before orienting the strand on the far side of the hook. Pick up the second strand and attach it in the same manner, this time on the near side of the fly. While pinning the rear legs back, take a few more wraps to make sure everything is securely anchored. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a 4 or 5 turn whip finish at the back edge of the hook eye. Make sure to seat the knot really well and snip your tying thread free. It's a good idea to add a small drop of head cement to the thread wraps immediately behind the eye and on the underside of the fly. And that's the Chernobyl bug. Dead drifted or stripped in to add some movement, it's all but guaranteed to elicit aggressive topwater takes.